In terms of the South Africa theatre scene, comedy scene, it gets no greater than this next guest of ours today. It's a man who for years has been entertaining audiences, not only in South Africa, but globally as well. Highly accomplished, highly entertaining. More, more, say more, say more. Alan, it's gotta be Alan Johnson Committee. Yes, what you, you, do, do, do you have a middle, What's your middle name? I don't have a middle name. It always made me sad because <laughs> I know that it's 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 layered because there's so much of it that they want to talk about performing not only to serious audiences yeah. and that, that enjoy a little bit of the of the cultural side but also making us laugh till we pee our pants literally some of us. Let's hop in this car. This is the latest Yo. offering from BMW. It's the M240i. It's a very special car. There aren't too many of these around. Let's see if we can get away from these people filming us. Yeah. Scale this car in typical Cape Town fashion. We could get a lot of money for this. Hundred percent. I mean, could you fill this up? <laughs> Have you, we haven't got no petrol. We're just going to sit in the parking lot. You break down. You just came from insurance. Just write should, it off. We should get this car towed from area to area. That would be cheaper to drive it. Oh, I'm excited though. Alan, let's hop in. Let's right, find let's out more go. about let's Alan Committee, ladies and gents. Oh, oh, oh. Finally, you and I are yeah, well, This is amazing, now, man. This is pretty cool because I've been a long time admirer, although our paths have never really yeah. crossed. Um, uh, I, I've been a fan for longer than it took for our paths to eventually cross and for you to be on um, a show I was hosting recently. Uh, and but Because, I mean, both of us have just been very, very busy. 100%. So here we are. I get to find out about the world of Alan Committee, what makes Alan and has made Alan who you are today. And so let's start at the very beginning. Where, where did the love for, for theatre uh, come from was it in, in school did you know that this yeah is what I, wanted I knew to do? I was one of those guys who knew very young so for me uh, it started when I was young and a lot of people you know you by the time you get out of high school or you're approaching your kind of early adult you kind of ah you got six or seven options yes I was that guy when I was five or six years old now now Ryan you need to <laughs> brace yourself because I grew up in Thunder Bell Park <laughs> and there's no need to hold that against me it'll be lovely when they finish it and even at that early age Boswell Wilkie still used to tour the country so they arrived I remember sitting and being entranced by the clowns in the yeah. audience. And by the time I was in standard one, well, the old, I think they have grades now. Yes, when when we were right. at school. When we were school standards. Well, yeah. we, had, we had standards, standards. in the education. That's the truth. <laughs> uh, let's get this baby started. Um, oh. oh, it's a pretty thing. So, um, so it got me thinking, well, hang on, this is something that I might want to do. Yes. Uh, entertain the crowd. So by the time I got to standard five, I remember having a conversation with my parents. Now, to put it in perspective, my dad was in the Navy, right. an electrician. My mom was a housewife. Okay. We were pretty kind of working class and we didn't have a lot of money or anything like that. There's no, na the, there's no Navy in Thunderbelt Park. No, we would moved by then. No, no, I, I, I hear you. No, no, you're right. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm staying with the story. I hear you. And I get Thunderbelt Park so, and then Navy. No, no I like, gave you mixed <laughs> signals there. So he was in his school and then he, we re relocated. Right. So by the time I get to Cape Town, Yes. And no more uh, Boswell Wilkie, certainly not in the areas we were staying. Um, it, it got to a point where I thought to myself, this is something I want to do. Yes. I, I really want to be part of yeah. entertainment. So I say to my parents, it's standard five. Well, I'm about to go into standard five. I think I've decided I want to be an actor. Got you. And some of the best acting I've ever seen was my dad's reaction <laughs> as he gave me support. But I knew that's not what he wanted to do. So he said to me, oh, that's amazing. He said as he lied <laughs> quietly. He said, is there anything else you could do um, no, like, you know, as a backup? And I kind of thought about it for a second yeah. or two and I said, yeah, I'll do teaching. I was lucky enough I had a lot of good teachers early yes. in my primary school career so that's it I made my mind up by the time I was 12 years old yeah and literally by the time I'd left high school that plan hadn't changed Got you. through high school I did all the school plays and yes. I was head of drama and blah yes. blah all of that stuff and so literally I went straight out of varsity uh, out of high school into UCT studied theater as an actor and then did a teacher's diploma and had the teaching degree behind me and so it kind of just was what it was yes um, did you teach? I did. I taught for eight years on and off, uh, part-time, first at Westford, then at Herschel. Okay. Uh, school for girls and what have you. And, um, <laughs> and that was an interesting time as well because I loved the teaching. Make no mistake about that. And obviously while you were teaching, you were still performing. I, I was starting to perform and create a kind Got of career you. for myself. Yes. And, and so in 1997, Princess Di passed. Now that yes. seems like a strange fact to bring up now. Uh, but it was the thing that led to my first one-man show because I needed to go to Grahamstown. Well, I was, I was keen oh, to. Man. 
and at that stage, you remember when place. Yeah, Grahamstown was incredible and the festival was at its peak. And, yeah. But in order to stand out from all the noise, so many shows and so many people True. looking for shows, yes. you had to do something either co yes. politically controversial yes. or you had to be naked. Correct. Yes, I remember. I remember. I uh, remember. Yeah. And I, no one wants to see me naked. Even no. I get a shock when I look in the mirror. <laughs> so I thought, well, what can I do? So I called. I, did, I, I had two loves. I had Richard III. I loved Shakespeare. Yes. I loved that play. I knew no one would cast me. I was too young. So I decided to write a one-man version in which I would play an actor playing all the parts. Pause. And then I was talking to my friend who I was teaching at Westford at the time, and he said, well, you're going to have to do something to stand out from the crowd. So I called it Richard III, Third. the yeah. untold story of Diana's death. <laughs> and I had to crowbar <laughs> the link between Richard III, that palace, and the Windsor Palace, oh. and the kind of uh, conspiracy theory that maybe they had killed Princess Diana. Of course, I was way ahead of my time because we now know that's true. Sure. Um, <laughs> exactly. So it was, yeah, and so that was the first one-man show, and that was very much a theatre show. But off the back of that, in fact, I'm telling that because this year is my 25th Pretty, solo. I was say. Yeah, so Live and Let Laugh, which is a show that'll come to, yeah. to Cape Town at the end of the year to Theatre in the Bay. I've just finished it at Monty. And in that show, I talk about my, dare I say, the origin story, because that's sure. the phrase we use now with yes. all the movies, superhero movies. Yeah. And my origin story was in that very first performance at Grahamstown, doing a set rehearsed play, yeah. comedy play. Eight people arrived about 25 minutes into the show and they had to walk across the stage. So you know how difficult radio is and it's not a, a medium that sits necessarily comfortably with me. It's it's your playground. Yeah. And Nick, as you referenced, Nick Maria yes. was another guy. I, I think there are only three or four people and I would count you as one of them in the country who are superb interviewers because they don't just make the interview about themselves. They're able to pick up the slack when it's not working. Yes. They're able to create a rhythm and an energy and an interaction with a guest. But they also know when it's going well, when they've got the person who can do this, they throw the ball and they let the ball be Go. caught by the other yeah. person. Yeah. And that, and so someone like Nick, and over the years a couple of those guys have allowed me to really play on the radio and, and allow those characters to live, for yes. example. And as you say, that happening at the same time as some corporate work, work. my stand-ups working a little bit, and in between that I'm still getting to do some of my serious acting, which sure. I, I've, I've always wanted to kind of keep, even if it's just once every 12 to 15 months, because it's a it's a very different kind of muscle to flex. Yes. And, you know, those of us who work as solo acts or on our own, you know, you can sometimes get caught up in the insularity of it. Sure. And it's nice to just remind yourself that collaboration and working in a team game or a team cast is, is, a, is a different beast and you've got to be able to master that as well. There aren't, in actual fact, there's no other names that come to mind in terms of dipping in and out of the roles that you've played and the characters that you've played and the content that you've delivered on. Uh, I think of the entire theatre scene and TV scene, there's not an award that you haven't won, <laughs> which means one thing, that it means that you're not only uh, a good comic, but you're a bloody good actor thank you sir that that means a lot i appreciate that listen the truth of the matter is i it was a lovely middle space to be in for many years because all my comedian friends who i adore thought of me as an actor they didn't really think i was a stand-up all my actor friends <laughs> didn't they thought i was a comedian so they just didn't ever cast me which meant i had to create my own work and this little middle pond that i swam in meant that i could actually just work and do my own thing and Jeez. and it's been a beautiful thing and i you know now i'm in a position i i'm very lucky in that i yeah. i can produce some of my own work you know yes. we're about to announce in fact i can announce it yes here, please is we, we're gonna do um who's afraid of virginia wolf which is a brilliant oh, wow. Wow. Edward Albee, an American playwright's yeah. play, and it's turned six, it's 60 years old anniversary this year. Sylvain Strike is one of our best directors. Robin Scott, who was a drama school with me. Oh, so we'll do a proper serious play in the second half of the year, followed by my 25th stand-up show. And it's that kind of balancing and juxtaposing of, sure. that's what m makes me happy. It keeps yeah. my soul buzzing because- It feeds it. It does, 100%. And you know, as much as you adore radio and you're good at it, you can't just do that. No, you, you need to do you other have to things. do 100%. Otherwise you start stagnating. Yeah, spot Whether, on. You know, no, no matter how good you are, if it's the same stuff day in, day out, it's uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a problem. Speak, uh, talk to me about the rest of this year. I know that as we speak, as people are watching this, you're on a show that's on in, in the Western Cape. Uh, it ends this weekend. So if you're watching, you've got a couple nights left. Uh, this is out normally Thursday. So there's a couple nights left here. Right. But we, we've spoken about the other productions that, uh, that we can expect this year. What is next for you in terms of performances? So this Love Factually is a show that I wrote as a, a follow-up to Defending the Caveman. Yes. I was lucky enough oh, to do that for a thousand that was performances. Incredible. And and then uh, so that was an American text, and we had rights to pay. It got to the point, sadly, where they they started charging too much. They got a little greedy on yeah. that side. So I said to Peter Turin, um, 
you know, who I've had a brilliant working relationship with for over yes. you know, now over 20 years. Yeah. I said, let me give me a chance. Let me see if I can write a sequel to this. The the, the relationship landscape has changed anyway and continues to change. It yes. now feels like hour by hour. But yeah. Um, let me have a go at it. So we wrote a show called Love Factually, which essentially is looking at modern relationships okay. and Tinder and battle of sexes and exes. What are the sexes? What's the agenda of the gender? What, why a gender? What's this? You know, and that's just the, well, that's just for the ushers. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so that's, we've been playing. It's, so I've been bringing that backwards and uh, back and forth over the years. So this will be in its, I think I've done about 400 performances of this over five or six yes. years. And I'm now taking it to Cork Bay Theatre, so that finishes Got you. Uh, this week. Um, and then we'll take it to Empress Palace oh, uh, on the 26th and 27th of July. So people can book there through Quick, uh, Ticket Pro, I think it is. Um, and then after that, uh, as I said, a, a bit of straight theatre, so I start learning some words and oh. doing some rehearsals. And then we go to to the stand-up show at the end of the year, Theatre in the Bay. This is my favourite time of the year. You know how wonderful Cape Town yes. is over the festive you know, season. I was going to ask you, we, we, a couple of the favourite spots for our friends at, yeah. on, Cape, on Cape Town, etc. that love the Western Cape. You've you've chosen to also call this city home. Absolutely. Um, your favourite spots in Cape Town? Wow. Uh, you know, it's so interesting. This city surprises you. And I think during lockdown, most of us, because we were stuck at home and we had a couple of hours a day during hard lockdown to... to move around yes you start to realize the stuff we take for granted yeah I'm lucky I stay here in Tokai the beautiful forested oh, areas the stunning. unbelievable walks that are available literally seven or eight minutes away from where I live yes travel 15 minutes I'm either at Musenberg Beach or I'm at Cork Bay another 10 minutes on I'm at Camps Bay another 10 minutes on I'm in Seapoint <laughs> I can go up a mountain I can go for an hour outside of town and I'm in vineyards or I can go up the west coast and I'm I feel like I'm in another country it's it really is an extraordinary city there so certainly for nature and walks and all of that stuff it's it's amazing but I would also argue that um you know the the people here are incredible yeah, and uh, the right place is great restaurants and that. so camps bay i think is one of the most beautiful theater yes. vistas anywhere in the world and i've been lucky yeah. enough to see many theaters uh, it really is extraordinary and so that christmas season oh, with the sun and sunset beautiful. the beach the yeah. uh, the, the, the restaurants ah oh, man it is incredible um but before we go, I want to quickly touch on your petrol head, and I know yes. that you. Um, what did you think of the car? Very nice, very the smooth. Around it, uh, I would like to have taken open it up a little bit and yeah. and, uh, and and see how what it can do. As you know, I like. Listen, I've been lucky enough to drive some very nice cars. Yes. I'm, you know, I'm a petrol. I just spend so much time in my car. I'm sure yeah. you do yeah. too. So it's got to be comfortable. It's got to be. But then also, we need a little bit of room. You know, a yeah, little bit of power when when it. You've got the nicest days, sounding car, a V8 engine ever. Oh man, it is a sweet sound. I'm very happy. I used to have an R8, uh, which I remember was, that. I remember yeah, seeing your R8, which was lovely. But getting it now out of it uh, as to, I get oh, older. Oh, the back it doesn't do anything. <laughs> any, no good for the back. I get sports injuries in my sleep See, now. <laughs> it's, it's no good. It really isn't. That Jag SVR is something special. It's it's the best sounding car in the market. In, in, it's, it's, it's very just pretty, very yeah. when you want it to sound loud and go yeah. like a bad out of hell it goes. Well, uh, but uh, it's so refreshing to have spent some time with you. Importantly, uh, it's taken me 20 odd years to, to, to feature uh, you a bit more in my career and for our careers to have, have, have crossed paths. And I, it really is a, a good space uh, uh, for, for me to be sitting here and having this conversation with you because it's really, you, you're one of the comics that I really have admired immensely. Uh, if you haven't been to see Alan, you've obviously, you, you're from way out of town. <laughs> uh, please go and, and book tickets to go and, and because, because this is comedy gold uh, you very rarely get to meet a guy who's just a genuinely good guy but also happens to have the ability to make you laugh irrespective of where you are in your life oh, right. and that's what you what sweet, it is man. you're doing and, and that's and, and that's honesty I, that's I the honest that. truth I, I enjoy a very sharp witted comedian there's nothing that's more appealing to me than somebody who's able to change up what he's doing when he's doing it on the fly and be able to banter and make a, a, a production come alive and you do that that's why you were the MC at the current jive or the, the, the past run of the uh, the Drive Cape Town uh, Comedy Funny Festival, Festival yeah. Funny Festival and it's no surprise why corporates keep keep booking you. Uh, and if you are a corporate looking for the best, if he's available, he might be able to do it at a fee. Uh, but this is, honestly, uh, it's been a, a pleasure spending some time with Thank you Thank you, today. son. I can say the exact same right back at you. I guess why you're flattering me here is because you need me to pay 
the petrol on this car, don't you? That's what this is all about. See through me, you bastard. <laughs> Alan, listen, all the best for the remainder of the year, pal. Thank you. It's lekker. Been a treat chatting to you today. Absolute pleasure. Like, subscribe, and importantly, get tickets to see this man live. It is a show of a lifetime. Uh, anything this guy does, really, uh, go and get tickets. And if you keep going up, he's, he's coming to you. If you're I'm living, coming to you. If you're living in Gauteng next week, he's coming up here. Stick eight. <laughs> Thanks a million, bud. Cheers, bud.